in the previous examples, we've looked at um, stoichiometry involving masses of samples. So we would convert from grams to moles to moles to grams. And if you recall, a couple sections ago, before we started the um, stoichiometry examples, we looked at converting moles to grams and grams to moles. Well, here we're going to do some uh, two examples of solution stoichiometry. But before we look at solution stoichiometry, we want to look at the other thing that we know how to convert to moles, which is molarity. So if you recall, molarity is a unit of concentration, and it equals moles of solute over liters of solution. But once you have the molarity, it can be used as an equality. So if we had a 0.225 molar NaCl solution, the equality is 0.225 moles of NaCl equals exactly one liters of solution because this is moles per one liter. So it's this many moles is equal to one liter of solution. If we had a 6.2 molar NaOH solution, then we have 6.2 moles of NaOH equals one liter of solution. So generally speaking, it's the molarity number of moles equals one liter of solution for the simple reason that it's moles per one liter. So this many moles per one liter. So here is an example of a question you could be asked. How many moles of NaOH are in 700 milliliters of a three molar NaOH solution? So let's take a look at how to do that. So we have 700 mLs. Um, it's 700.0 mLs of 3.00 molar NaOH, and we want to know how many moles of NaOH there are. So we're going to go from liters of solution, I'm going to call it liters of NaOH solution, to moles of NaOH. And this is an important thing that we have to be able to do. Remember that we're back from this section, we don't use milliliters. We have to convert this to, mil to liters by dividing by 1,000. Now, to go from liters of NaOH to moles of NaOH, we need an equality. It's the molarity of number of moles, 3.00 moles of NaOH, equals 1 liter of the NaOH solution. So, remember that it's the molarity of number of moles equals 1 liter, because this is moles per liter. So starting with 0 0.7000 liters of the NaOH, remember I divided this by 1,000, times, well, we want liters on the bottom, 1 liter of NaOH on the bottom, and on top, 3.00 moles of the NaOH. When you do this and round to three significant figures, because this is three, you find that it's 2.10 moles of NaOH. Now this could be used in solution stoichiometry because once we have moles of NaOH, if we have a balanced chemical equation, we convert to moles of something else and then to grams of something else or divide by the volume and find the liters or find the molarity or whatever the case may be, depending on what the question asks. So the last thing that we're going to do in this chapter is look at two examples of where we uh, can do uh, solution stoichiometry. And the first example we're going to look at is something called a titration. Now, in a titration, we can find the concentration of one reactant by knowing the concentration of another reactant. And concentration is probably the wrong word. We can find the amount of one reactant knowing the amount of another. So what we would do, for example, in this case, if we're reacting HCl and calcium hydroxide, is we would put calcium hydroxide in the burette, the solution in the burette. We would put HCl in the flask, and we would slowly allow the dissolved calcium hydroxide to drip into the flask until it turns pink. When this turns pink, it's a pH indicator because this is an acid-base reaction. We have an acid, a strong acid, reacting with a strong base. When it turns pink, it's neutral, meaning the amount of HCl and the amount of calcium hydroxide are equal. So if we know something about the amount of HCl, we can find something out about the amount of calcium hydroxide, and vice versa. If we know something about the amount of calcium hydroxide, we can find something about the amount of HCl. So let's look at this example. It says, what is the molarity of calcium hydroxide solution if it takes 22.5 milliliters of calcium hydroxide solution to titrate 50 milliliters of a 0 0.1002 molar HCl solution. So notice, we're given a volume and a molarity, 
in order to find moles. We are not given a mass. So let's do this on a piece of paper. So first thing we need is the reaction. So we have 2HCl, aqueous, a strong acid, reacting with CaOH2, aqueous, a strong base. And this is a double displacement reaction. H goes with OH to form water as a liquid. That's the driving force because it's not aqueous. And calcium goes with Cl. It's Ca2 plus Cl minus. So you get CaCl2, which is aqueous. Because we have two H's and two OH's, we get two waters. So in this case, for this particular reaction, we have... Um, 50 mLs of 0 0.1002 molar HCl. So this is the amount we have, and this is the concentration of the HCl. We know that it, we use 22.52 milliliters of the calcium hydroxide to do the titration. And the question is, what is the molarity of the CaOH2. So what we don't know is the molarity of the calcium hydroxide. So we know the amount, the volume, and the molarity of the HCl. We know the volume of the calcium hydroxide, but we don't know its molarity. Well, really what we're missing to find molarity is moles. If we can find the moles of calcium hydroxide, then we can find the molarity. Why? Because we know the volume. Remember that whenever we're dealing with molarities, we have to use liters. So if we look at the HCl here, if we take the liters of the HCl, we can convert that to moles of HCl because we have a molarity. Once we have moles of HCl, we can use the balanced chemical equation and convert to moles of CaOH2. Then if we take those moles, this is not truly dimensional analysis, and we divide by the volume in liters, we can find the molarity, because moles per liter is molarity. So this is essentially dimensional analysis, where the last step's not really dimensional analysis, because we're going to divide by the volume in liters. So we have to find an equality between liters of HCl and moles of HCl. Well, we can. We have a molarity. So 0 0.1002 moles of HCl equals 1 liter of this HCl solution. Between moles of HCl and moles of CaOH2, we have a balanced chemical equation. 2 moles of HCl from here equals 1 mole of CaOH2. And then finally, we just need to divide by the volume in liters, which is not an equality. We just need to convert this to liters, divide by 1,000, 0 0.0. 2252 liters of CaOH2. So that's how many liters we have to divide by. Now we can set this up. So starting with liters of HCl, take the 50 milliliters and divide by 1,000. 0 0.0500 liters of HCl solution times. Now we want liters to cancel out. So we put the 1 liter of HCl on the bottom the 0 0.1002 moles of HCl on the top times. Now we need to use the balanced chemical equation. We want HCl to cancel out, so we put the 2 moles of HCl on the bottom, which we can either get from the equality we made or the balanced chemical equation, and the 1 mole of CaOH2 on the top times. Now, just like when we were doing um, molarity questions, if you want to convert from moles to molarity, you have to divide by the volume in liters. So we put 1 over 0 0.02252 liters of CaOH2. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, repeat until you're done, and you find that it is 0 0.111 molar CaOH2 solution. So a couple of interesting things to note here. First of all, by knowing the amount of one reactant, we can find the amount 
of another. In this case, we found the molarity, but we could have found the grams if we wanted to. Um, it just didn't ask for grams, but we could have converted from moles of CaOH2 to grams of CaOH2. So, so knowing the amount of one reactant, we know the, can know the amount of the other. This is the case in a titration. And in this case, we use phenolphthalein as an indicator because this is an acid-based titration, and phenolphthalein turns pink when the solution is neutral. Said another way, when the amount of HCl and the amount of CaOH2, calcium hydroxide, are equal, it turns pink. The other interesting thing to note here is we used molarities and volumes, liters and molarities, to find moles, as opposed to using grams and a periodic table. This is, in fact, the only other thing that you need to be able to convert to moles in this section of the course. So grams to moles using the periodic table and volumes, 50 milliliters in this case, which we converted to liters, to moles using a molarity. Both of those you need to be familiar with. Let's look at one other example that is similar but not the same. This is a case of gravimetric analysis. So we talked about precipitation reactions before, where some precipitate forms. Well, gravimetric analysis is essentially isolating and weighing that precipitate. So here, lead to nitrate is mixed with potassium chloride to form lead to chloride, which is insoluble. Chlorides are generally soluble. Lead is an exception, so it's not soluble. So it precipitates and KNO3. Note that K plus and NO3 minus are your spectator ions. When you mix these together, you form a white precipitate. I will tell you, this is not actually that precipitate. This is out of our lab manual, and it's magnesium carbonate, but it would be very similar. Now, we can isolate this and filter out the water and the spectator ions by simply filtering it. The water and the spectator ions will go through the filter. The lead uh, to chloride will stay on top. You can dry it and weigh it, and you can end up with a um, gravimetric analysis. Now we could predict how much of the um, lead to chloride we should make. So in this case it says how many grams of lead to chloride can be made from 25 milliliters of a 0.5 molar potassium chloride solution reacting with excess lead to nitrate solution. And we're given a reaction here. So again I want to recopy that reaction down um, so that we can take a look at it over here. So we have PbNO3 2 which is aqueous. Nitrates are soluble so that's aqueous plus KCl aqueous and we have a double displacement reaction Pb goes with Cl to yield PbCl2 which is solid. Again chlorides are generally soluble but lead is an exception and K plus goes with NO3 minus, and you end up with KNO3. Both potassium and nitrate salts are always soluble, so this is aqueous, and we need two of them to balance the chemical equation. So in this case, we are going to use 25 milliliters of 0 0.500 molar KCl solution. And we're going to use excess of this, which means we don't have to worry about it. We know KCl is the limiting reagent because it told us that. So now let's look at our plan of attack. We have a balanced chemical equation, so if we can find moles of this, we can convert it to moles of this, and then finally to grams of this using the periodic table. So here, what we need to do is we need to start with liters of KCl. We then can convert that to moles of KCl, then to moles of PbCl2, and finally to grams of PbCl2, and this will be gravimetric analysis. Since this is a solid, we can filter it off, we can dry it, and we can record its mass to find the amount of product that we get. So let's look at how we would do this. To convert from liters of KCl to moles of KCl, just like in the previous example, we use the molarity. So 0 0.500 moles of KCl equals one liter of the KCl solution. Now, from moles of KCl to moles of PbCl2, we use the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of KCl equals one mole of Pb, oops, PbCl2, because it's a two to one stoichiometric relationship. Now, moles of PbCl2 to grams of PbCl2, we need to use our periodic table. So in our periodic table, lead is here, 
So one lead and two times the molar mass of chlorine. And when you do all that math, you find that one mole of PbCl2 is equal to 278.1 grams of PbCl2. So now we can use the molar mass um, to find this equality. Now let's do the math. Remember, we start with liters, not milliliters, so divide that by 1,000. 0 0.0250 liters of KCl times. Well, we want liters to cancel out, so we put one liter of the KCl on the bottom and the 0 0.500 moles of KCl on the top times. Now we want to go from moles of one thing to moles of another. We use the balanced chemical equation or the equality we already drew. We want KCl to cancel out, so we put the two moles of KCl on the bottom and the one mole of PbCl2 on the top. Then finally, we want uh, to find the mass of the PbCl2. So we put the 278.1 grams of PbCl2 on the top and the one mole of PbCl2 on the bottom. And when you do all this math and you round to three sig figs, you find that you should isolate 17.4 grams of PbCl2, which could then be filtered, and you could find the mass, and you could find the theoretical, or the, or excuse me, this is the theoretical yield, but you could find the percentage yield if you knew the actual yield, if you actually weighed it, which you will do with magnesium carbonate in the labs here at UAlbany. So this is essentially um, gravimetric analysis. Now, something I want to point out is a little bit of a larger picture thing. In some cases, we went from grams to moles to moles to grams. In other cases, you might want to find how many moles of product you can make. In other cases, you might want to find the concentration of one of the uh, solutions, such as in the previous titration example with the calcium hydroxide. In this case, you wanted to find the mass of PbCl2. Note that all of these conversions are possible with some molarities, some volumes, or periodic tables, some masses, and things like this. The point here is there's no straightforward equation with variables where you can simply plug in variables that you, that you know and solve for the ones that you don't know. Here, there's lots of things you can solve for such as in the previous example, we found the concentration of calcium hydroxide. We could have found the mass of calcium hydroxide, but the question told us to find the concentration of calcium hydroxide. The only way to get it so that you're making sure you're finding the right thing is practice. And if you practice several of these, um, it'll be extremely helpful. If you just look at the examples that are the I've gone over here, but you don't actually practice it, it's very easy to get lost. And the best way to uh, do this, in my opinion, is Try a problem. If you get stuck, look up the answer, watch a video. Um, if it's on Alex, there's videos for all the problems. Um, and get yourself unstuck. Then do another one. What you're going to find is the more you do, the less often you get stuck. Once you get to the point where you're not getting stuck, and this becomes what I call busy work, where you're just plugging in all these numbers, but you're not really getting stuck, you know where they all come from, you're good to go. So that is basically um, stoichiometry uh, in this chapter. And stoichiometry is extremely important in chemistry, and these, this has been a brief um, overview of stoichiometry with several examples. Certainly... Uh, it takes a lot of practice, and I could go over many more examples, but the great thing about the videos is you can watch back uh, the individual examples as many times as you want. So that has been the stoichiometry chapter.